Hey folks, Kyle Sandlin here with Operation Specific Training, and today we're going to begin a series of what I like to call Average Joe product installation and review videos. Uh, I think there's a lot of hesitancy and trepidation with a lot of people to go beyond just your basic field stripping of a firearm, especially when it comes to adding aftermarket parts to your firearm. Uh, I'm not a gunsmith by any means, nor did I stay in a Holiday Inn Express last night, so these will be pretty straightforward and honest videos uh, about how hard or easy I thought it was to install uh, a particular kit into a firearm. The first one I wanted to start off with today is from our friends over at Apex Tactical Specialties. Uh, it is their J-Frame Duty Carry Kit. Uh, Scott and Randy came out with this a handful of years ago, and they advertised three pounds off um, the factory trigger pull of a Smith & Wesson J-Frame. Now, if you have ever shot a Smith & Wesson J-Frame, you know one of its cons is that long, heavy, I think it's 12-pound trigger pull. So, uh, with an advertised 25% reduction, that's huge. So, what we're going to do is we're going to head inside, we're going to show uh, how to get the old stuff out, the new stuff in, then we'll head to the range and close with a few final thoughts. So. Uh, one thing in advance, uh, this is my first installation video, so uh, I beg your forgiveness in advance. Bear with me. Uh, I promise they do get better. So we're going to head inside, go to the bench, and we'll go from there. Okay, let's take a look and see what's actually in the kit itself. In this bag right here, you have the replacement mainspring. Your green spring here is the duty carry rebound slide spring. And in the second bag, you have the replacement firing pin as well as the reduced power firing pin return spring. So let's put it in. Here's our trusty and unloaded Smith & Wesson 642. Some of the tools we'll use, a pair of pliers, grease, screwdrivers, another screwdriver, 330 seconds Allen wrench to take your grips off, and probably the most important tool, good old fashioned paper clip. Okay, let's get started. Now one thing Scott does mention in the video that is important to remember is these screws need to go back into the same holes. So my trusty little magnetic screw holder I got for free from an auto parts store will work perfectly. You can also use a piece of cardboard to kind of remember their location. Okay, this is one of probably two aggravating parts of this install is to get this side plate right here off. Uh, you don't want to pry it off, you want to bang it. So I'm going to use plastic here and get her off. Try not to really hit your cylinder release there. Just kind of go all around it. Okay, next thing you want to do is get the mainspring out. This is where handy dandy paperclip comes into play. So what you want to do is compress the cylinder so that it exposes there's a little hole right there. And compress it just enough. start to see if I can get it that there you can start to see it right there there you go get that in there takes the stress 
of the spring and the strut. Go ahead and make sure. Ooh. Now the fun part, rebound spring. I unfortunately do not have the cool little forked main, or excuse me, uh, recoil slide spring tool that Scott had in his video, but I got a set of these screwdrivers that pretty much everybody in the world has probably five pair of. So I'm gonna use that, which I don't know what size that is, but this little one fits perfectly and that little gap right there to get this out. Now that we have the pistol disassembled as far as we need to go, we will start with putting in the apex parts. The first thing I'm going to do is replace the factory mainspring with the apex mainspring, which on the video, installation video Scott does, put this in a vise, compress this, pull the pin out, take it off, lube the strut up, put the replacement spring on. Pull the cap down, pin back in, you're good to go. So we'll do that real quick off camera. Okay, we have got the new Apex mainspring installed. I'll set that out of the way. Here's the old spring, and I'm going to go ahead and set all of the original parts out of the way so we don't get them confused. So we'll start by putting our rebound slide spring back in the rebound slide and we'll get this thing back together. Uh, one of the things Scott um, says on the video, I'll, I may try in the future, is if you want to take some fine grit sandpaper and touch up that surface right there as well as this surface right here, this is where the rebound slide contacts down here and on the inside of the frame give you a little bit smoother pull. So we'll go ahead and put her back in. Gonna pay attention to that little nub right there as it goes into that little mortise right there. And this is when 
Uh, here we go. This little tool right here comes in handy if you do not have the forked spring because it is the perfect size to go in that crevice right there. Got everything back together and in one piece. Let's see what the new trigger pull is. Your standard Smith & Wesson J-Frame has probably 12 pound trigger. This particular one of mine comes in just under that 11 pounds and some change. So Apex advertises three pounds off factory. Let's see what we get.
So there you see the average just at uh, eight pounds, nine ounces. So almost right on the money, three pounds off factory. Let's take her to the ring, see how she shoots. For as much fun as a Smith & Wesson J-Frame can ever be to shoot, this Apex J-Frame kit definitely makes it easier to shoot. The 25% reduction in trigger pull is immediately noticeable and you don't disturb the sights, uh, what little ones they are, near as much as when you've got that 12 pound factory trigger pull. For $25.95, maybe 30 minutes of your time, it's definitely a no-brainer investment for your Smith & Wesson J-Frame. Uh, gonna finish up, uh, put a few more rounds down range, and then we'll have a few closing thoughts. I have to say, overall, uh, this is probably, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the hardest, this is probably a good solid four, four and a half. Uh, the most difficult thing, uh, in my opinion, was the uh, rebound slide spring. Uh, that tool you can get from Brownhouse, I think it's 19 95 20 bucks, something like that, uh, would probably make it a little bit easier, but like Alton Brown, I'm not a big fan of uh, single-use tools, and considering I only have three revolvers, <laughs> I just as soon use a screwdriver, so uh, that's probably the most difficult portion of it. Um, if you watch the installation videos that Scott did, they can be found on the Apex website. Um, just take your time. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, I think I might have taken the side plate off of a revolver three times in my entire life, including this one. So, uh, with that being said, not not all that difficult. Um, the three pounds, 25% reduction uh, was instantly noticeable on the range, and I have to say, uh, it is a pretty outstanding piece of kit. Um, go out and buy one, you will not be sorry. If you own a J-Frame, it straight up is a must-have. So, And also, thanks for uh, sticking out my first video, uh, one of many to come, so uh, thanks for getting it out. So, um, for $25.95, go get one. That's all. Just I'll leave it with that. Go buy one. You will not be sorry. So this is Kyle Sandlin with Operation Specific Training. Go train and we'll see you on the range.